Congressman Pete Sessions, represents Texas 17th Congressional District was ticked off by Jared Moskowitz, during the Faith Under Fire, House Oversight Committee hearing, for expressing dissatisfaction with certain Republicans for their alleged involvement with hate groups. Must watch. Happen just now. Enjoy hearing your thoughts. Please leave comments. Thanks. In 2022, the Anti-Defamation League said there were 3,697 anti-Semitic incidents in the United States. That was a 36% increase from 2021, just a year before. <clears throat> I think it was an excellent decision by President Biden to elevate the position of the head of the Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism uh, to an ambassador at large. You know, when my Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis and the Proud Boys and white supremacists group. The House just approved a new amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act. It would compel government officials to prepare a report on white supremacist and neo-Nazi activity in federal law enforcement and the military, as well as presenting ways to combat it. Out of 211 Republicans in the House, 205 voted against the amendment. Yeah, that's right. Republicans just voted against finding and dealing with neo-Nazis in our military and police forces. Now why might that be? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I find that offensive that the gentleman would make a broad statement like that. And I think that he should back that up with any individual, but not a broad group. That would be inappropriate for me. Don't, and untrue. That don't worry, I'm getting to the part you'll like. Well, I don't, okay. perhaps you are. I find it <clears throat> offensive that you have used this forum. Sure, no problem. Donald, Donald Trump had dinner with a Holocaust denier at his house. You want, you want more facts? Th then use that, sir. Sure, no problem. When my Republican colleagues support a president of the United States who's having dinner with a Holocaust denier at his house and they remain silent, silence is complicity. Uh, when, there are Nazi, when there are Nazis, when there are Nazis, Mr. Sessions, I would like my time Mr. back, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure you'll get that back. Broad statements are inappropriate and are not worthy of this hearing. I, I know you're you in want, denial that he had dinner. I, I, with the I, I, I was dinner. unaware of it. So for you to assume that oh, I was national news for like a week. I, that, that matters not. not. Oh. Good to see you both, David. I want to start with you. Talk to me. I mean, this is not the first time that Donald Trump has fraternized uh, someone with the likes of, of Fuentes, and, and yet it can never, it can absolutely never become normalized. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Alicia. I think everybody can make their own judgment about Donald Trump the man and what's in his heart, but what we do know is there's a pattern of giving aid and comfort to racist, uh, to anti-Semitic individuals, to bigots, and that's true of Mar-a-Lago Mar just this week. I think, look, we're, we're overlooking the fact that he also had dinner with Kanye coming out of the last four to six weeks. This has not been a good moment for Kanye's personal convictions either. So for Donald Trump to plead ignorance just simply doesn't make any sense whatsoever. He, there is a pattern of this that was affirmed. The bigger question, does it matter for Republicans? I think the silence is fairly interesting. Mm -hmm. Look, you've got a whole bunch of Republicans hoping that this is the end of Donald Trump, but they're not willing to be the ones to place their bet on that. So if Donald Trump emerges in the Republican primary as the front runner, expect them all to get right back behind them like they did four years ago. Juanita, your thought on this guest list. Look, it's no surprise. Trump ran on white supremacy and anti-Semitism and bigotry in 2016 and 2020. And that's clearly the plan in 2024 as he unites anti-Semites and white supremacists at Mar-a-Lago. It's disgusting, but it's par for the course. What's also par for the course that David mentioned was the fact that Republicans haven't said anything. And honestly, everybody who had smoke for Trump after they lost their races through him and his handpicked candidates needs to speak up because ultimately they're showing that they have no backbones. They're showing that they're still cowards. They're showing that they will still cower to Trump in 2024. So whatever that pipe dream of Republicans turning on Trump, kissing goodbye, they're showing yet again, they're sticking with him by not calling him out. And honestly, this is dangerous and it's only going to continue to escalate. So I appreciate you showing that tweet from Representative Torres because he knows what's up. He's calling it out for what it is. Not only is Trump 
using these people as his closest advisors when everybody else seems to be abandoning him. But he is who he plans to lean on, especially when he tries to appeal to his white supremacist racist base. What I'm trying to say, Mr. Chairman, is this hearing needs to stay very cordial and very much on the level. And attacks like this are exactly why our country is going through what we're going through. And Mr. Today, Chairman, there needs to be a, there needs to be a point of order, actually, in this. There's no point of Thank order. You, I, I, call, I called nobody out other than the the former president of the United States, Donald that Trump. That is not correct, sir. You referred to Republicans. Mr. Chairman, there needs to be a point of order, that please. Is, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that you please admonish the people of this subcommittee and that we are trying to make progress together. Mr. Chairman, there needs to be a point of order. Other. Yeah, and I'd like we, my we, time back, Mr. We, we, we need a point of order. You, you will get your time back. We're not running the clock. Okay. If, if there's no point of order, just continue. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll go back to what I was previously saying, is that when Republican colleagues, not all of them, but some Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis and the Proud Boys and white supremacist groups. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would sir, like for we, you to we, please- Sir, there's no point we, of order we here. Need a point of order. I, I know this okay. is uncomfortable, but I, I, wanna, I wanna get through this. So it's just a paragraph, and, and we'll be fine. So, so much for free, free speech. When uh, some of my Republican colleagues cozy up to neo-Nazis, Proud Boys, and white supremacist groups because they are their voters, and when President Trump hosts Holocaust deniers at Mar-a-Lago, sometimes we hear silence from our friends uh, on the right. When Nazis are holding rallies in the streets, when mass murderers go into synagogues or grocery stores and have Nazi symbols or anti-Semitic dossiers under white nationalism or Christian nationalism, we actually don't hear silence, we hear denial. But don't worry, I wanna make this committee bipartisan because this is a bipartisan issue. Anti-Semitism is bipartisan. And there is plenty of bipartisan silence of what's happening to Jews in this country on the left. Gas the Jews, kill the Jews, glory to the martyrs, celebrating Hamas killing, killing of innocent people at GW last night, my alma mater. Glory to the martyrs, glory to the people that raped women, that killed babies in their cribs, glory to those people. Uh, bring back Hitler, Jews are not wanted. No wonder the Germans killed them. Zionism is a mental illness. No wonder why Hitler wanted to get rid of them. The Jews. Posters of children hostages being pulled down all over the country. Swastikas coming back, not just at rallies, but people are just wearing them. Cheering in the street after rape, killing babies, using rape as a cause of resistance, burning people alive like they did in concentration camps to bring back the smell of burning Jews. We are constantly told that you can be critical of Israel's policies without being anti-Semitic. Except, that's not what we're seeing in the street. We're not seeing from the progressive left them saying, you know, Israel. No, they're saying the Jews, right? We're constantly told, no, no, you can criticize a country's policies and positions. It's not about a religion. It's not about an elimination of people. Except that's not what they're saying. That's not what they're doing. All being done in the cause of resistance or progressive values. And again, while it's not all of my members, silence from the progressive left. <clears throat> you know, I get it. Jews don't look like the usual victim. We don't look like victims. No, we look more like oppressors. And in social media, where everything is, you know, binary, right? We don't like complicated arguments, right? And where facts don't matter anymore because folks like Elon Musk took away all of the guardrails and where anti-Semitism and racism and, and hatred is just breeding on social media. Uh, it is no wonder why what we're, we're seeing now scares the Jewish community because we have not seen this since the Holocaust. You know, 
It's because Jews are subhuman. That's, that's what it is. It is a double standard that is only applied to us, and both parties are failing. Because, you know what? <clears throat> Each of them have no problem calling out anti-Semitism when the other side does it. Right? The Republicans will call out the squad. Democrats will call out, you know, Republican members when they say, you know, Jews and space lasers. No, no. We have no problem doing it on the other side, because that's easy, super easy, to criticize the other side. No, but it is much harder to do it when it's within your own ranks. Much harder to do it within your own ranks. That's when we see the silence. And so, I'll conclude, Mr. Chairman. You know, Jews have often wondered why it took so long for people to come to their aid during the Holocaust, why millions of people were slaughtered before people came to their aid. Now we know. Now we know why it took so long. And we also now know, because we see it in this country, in the streets and in the halls of Congress, we now know who those people are who wouldn't come to our aid now if that happened again. I yield back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Happen Just Now for more content about accountability of all public officials and policies and procedures.